I began my professional career working in Africa. At about 25 years, it's already been 25 years. I was fresh out of graduate school from UCLA with dreams of building safe water projects, curbing disease, fighting illness. I had those dreams. But there was violence. I was immersed in this world of contrast, dancing joyously with the villagers, celebrating, digging a new well. Women no longer had to walk miles to wash their clothes and get water for their babies. And then in the next moment, you hear these cries, these screams of terror and death. You're helping build mass graves for the kids you know by name and who you played with. It, it seems so inhuman. And yet, I almost felt like there must have been a reason that I was exposed to all of that. There was a message in it that I should value every moment of my life. After my accident, the first thing I saw was Annie. She was my girlfriend of 15 years, but when I woke up and saw her in the hospital, I knew that I wanted her to be as close to me as possible. Could not talk. I was hooked up to tubes. I could hardly breathe. With a letter signboard, I nodded the words and could not finish the sentence before she knew with tears in her eyes that she would marry me. Just a short time before that, I didn't want to live. I had just realized the damage my body had had, how little physically I was going to be able to do. I didn't want to live, to be a burden to those I love, and I did not think I had the strength. Annie did not force my hand. She let me know that any decision to turn off the machine would be mine. But when I looked in her eyes, it was a different story. I could see her heart, and her heart was saying, live, we can do this, we can make it. And from that moment on, I wanted to live. So I'm learning every day something new about my body and what it can do and cannot do. Even something as simple as a wrinkle in a sheet can be fatal for me. It can cut through my skin or stubbing my toe and having a little bleeding, something that I cannot feel can still be devastating. These are the new battles I must fight every day, every hour. You know, people ask me sometimes, say, aren't motorcycles dangerous? And they still ask me. And I grew up and rode the bike for 45 years. And I thought, as long as you care for yourself and your own driving, you should be fine. But the one factor that nobody thinks about or imagines is something happening behind you. And I can't help but look for some meaning because it was so abrupt and it was no fault of mine. But it just, oh here, we're coming up to the place where I had the accident and I landed right under here. This is the spot where I hit the, the side of the freeway.
In all humility, I must admit these issues pale in the scope of the other concerns to which I'm even more aware of. I've spent the last 25 years to provide us with one of the simplest of necessities in one of the most vast and complex water systems in the world. When I try to move my legs and I cannot, I wonder if these challenges of sustainable water are even more difficult. How do we keep up? The pollutants in our water, federal spending cuts, our failing infrastructure, our lack of money for research and development, privatization of municipal water supplies, the fight to keep these municipalities municipal, and most frightening, the diminishing supply of clean drinking water. I, uh, it's ironic today how people look at me with a sense of fear or regret, sadness. My time in the three hospitals that I had to rehabilitate from was a protected environment. But the day I stepped out and entered the real world, I was afraid to see the look in strangers' eyes. One thing I do feel when strangers in my own city give me those looks or behave in that way, sometimes I want to scream out that I'm struggling every day, fighting to live so that I can still continue to do something good for us all. I can't help but wonder, as a civil servant working to provide this city's drinking water, if they only knew that I am very much a part of them. I live in this city. I drink the water we provide, but without it, how would this city live? How would we survive? There'll be no food, no homes, no love, no school life, no way for me to try and stand again. These are not just the problems of poor villages in Africa that I once served, but of the larger village that is our own backyard. And for that, for my wife Annie, for her children who I love as my own, for my village, I want to live. I want to work another day. I dream one day we will all know what matters to us most. For me, that's to help bring you water, a basic need. But we have many needs. For you, that might mean giving friendship, art, science, faith, love, to provide strength to others as my Annie has done to me. I dream tomorrow we take these ideas and run. But today, I walk. After the accident, I was going through this emotional phase of feeling very regretful. I kept thinking all the way from friends who have been kind to me, opportunities I did not see well enough to do more. And I kept feeling like I missed all those chances. I didn't thank people enough, too late to contact them, was feeling low, but I realized that the people, if you truly touch them, like you think you have, they'll understand, they'll continue caring, loving and remembering you.